Welcome back everyone to another video and in this one I'll be taking a look at this very weird thing called the DOM. Now though these were pretty famous in uh, old embedded system when they were still making x86 stuff uh, similar to the uh, VC3, uh, the via C3 uh, CPU motherboard that I reviewed a while back. But uh, with these um, DOMs it was it, it's basically like a flash card for your old ID systems where compact fla flash were very expensive. So it's just in the form of that. Uh, I won't go as far as comparing to SSDs because they are not quite that. But you know, at the end of the day, they are solid state disks. Uh, but they are more famously known as disk on module. Um, and we'll take a look at it. So I'm just showing the Aliexpress page because that's where I ordered them from and that's of course way 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 before the whole human malware stuff happened. So um, Yeah, that's that's not related to this and uh, There it is. There's my particular unit. So let's go ahead take a deep dive and see how it works Alright, so I have it attached to this ribbon cable which we'll get to in a moment and I've already opened it up um, as you can see the case isn't that strong the uh, grip of the ribbon cable is much stronger so um, a moment where I, while I take it all apart right so that came off fairly easily um, we have uh, a switch which is uh, like a right protect switch up here we have a flash uh, chip from samsung which is the only 32 megabyte chip here there's an option to put another one of course you can uh, increase memory and all of that stuff and here we have a simple controller and the, all the controller does is to convert the flash um, to, to ide basically there's no other task that that chip has to do so it's uh, just converting the nand flash to uh, ide and that's about it so uh, just some some pull-ups here i'm guessing uh i don't know if the voltage is the same but i'm guessing there are voltage dividers in there as well because i'm not sure that the um flash memory operates at like five volts i think that's too much but anyway that's a 32 megabit single chip flash and then you have your um read write lock uh, switch here which um not even sure which way it goes uh, and yeah so that's on the unlock position so there's not much to it uh, unlike a modern day SSD uh, there's no sock in there usually more of the modern day ones have a decent amount of sock and DRAM cache uh, this just directly translates uh, IDE to um, flash storage and again modern day socks are a bit different in the sense that they at least have some sort of a intelligent controller but yeah this is this just is this is a dumb controller not a super nice one so again this is called disk on module i just the term ssd wasn't coined back in the day so uh, i don't have a ide system on hand to show you all what i do have is this thing which is a uh, which is a very nice uh, USB to SATA to uh, mini IDE and full IDE uh, and it does all three at once as well so you can actually have three disks connected so uh, we'll plug that in again we have power here as well uh, we'll ditch the casing and we'll plug it in via the ribbon cable now just to have everything connected as it should be uh, this goes here so again if um, on, on a regular hard drive you have a ribbon cable going from the drive uh, the the socket to the drive and that's usually male and female in so um, so so this is like emulating the end of a cable not the actual motherboard whereas this is supposed to go on the actual motherboard so here's the confusion and both of them end up being a female part so uh, I luckily had this uh, converter cable lying around so I can just plug that in like so um, and then plug in power so this has on board um, this supplies the hard drives with power as well so I like that thing about it uh, 
think something like this should make sense or no so the color combination is completely off but mm, i think their minds in the light direction so they're just using the 5 volt rail they're not using the 12 volt rail but their whole color color combination is off but i know it works this way uh, if it doesn't work we'll have magic smoke and it's it's a win-win situation either way uh, and to power it on no magic smoke i cannot see anything on the lights um, so there we go we have usb storage that so there's no led on the drive itself so uh, i'll just move to the desktop and show you guys the magic all right so these are all the disks here and here, here you can see the hyperdisk dom uh, here with a space between the s and the k so um whoever wrote the firmware of the thing obviously did a typo but that's all right so here you can see it's uh, mbr partition with just uh, empty unallocated free space i got it like this but i had a hunch this was way too old to be new i mean if you look at the drive no one's making 32 megabytes drives anymore so i had a hunch this was old and i ran a very simple g parted based uh, recovery on it so nothing fancy just something that's installed on every linux machine uh, so uh, i ended up with this um, a bunch of data that came out i made a disk image as well um, and then ended up reformatting it and trying it around but uh, from here you can see that it was used for some sort of a kiosk. Some of the bitmaps you can't load. Uh, most of the bitmaps you can't load. But there are like some icons that you can load and then uh, most of the icons and uh, UI elements, it, it, they got dumped as bitmaps. Um, from there, there were some more data files that were unreadable. Um, there was a couple of images in GIF format. Uh, some Chinese characters, some banners, um, stuff like that. So probably a kiosk, a kiosk used somewhere in China um, and just had all of this uh, weird stuff on there. Um, and it, it gets clearer the more you look into it. Uh, it there's an HTM file that does something. So maybe a web-based kiosk, something like that. Uh, JPEGs are more interesting. They tell a bit more of the story. Um, if they open, that is not all were recovered. So this, if anyone um, can read, says Linux red flags often glow go. So like someone um, in that area were making that again red flags software and go. Uh, again, you can say some of the image is like half corrupted. Um, but yeah, so that was one folder. There's more with all sort of random stuff you can find, just heaps of corrupted images like this. Um, again, I think uh, some banner from somewhere, uh, more corrupted stuff, um, uh, corrupted images, and yeah, just, just like things like that. Uh, all over the place uh, another banner from there that company there was a bit there was like a lost and found so someone tried to delete something open up something stuff like that you can't access it. Um, um right moving on mov files didn't really play uh all of them were corrupt sadly uh, i would have liked to like see what sort of animations that were going around all of them were corrupt um so maybe the recovery software just mistook it for something else there was mpeg as well which again did not play so again some um some mistake in recovery uh, rpm folder which had a bunch of rpm files i'm not sure what packages they are but apparently they were um And from there, uh, there was this diff files as well, which I don't think none of them worked as well. So maybe just detected a mass diff files. Okay, so what I'm, lo I'm looking for something specific and it was in lost and found someone actually did. So yeah, you can see uh, this is the bin folder um, with all the executable files. So 
now the interesting part starts so if, if I uh, open up a terminal here now those are all linked but like something like ash is not so if I run a file on it uh, you can see it's uh, it was Intel 80, uh, 386 based system or at least compiled for 386 not sure uh, what it ran on GNU Linux 2.0 um, and yeah dynamically linked uh, and uh, for to LD uh, Linux so right so tiny login dot sh like that stuff you can open up and see please don't execute um, where's the editor the editor does not want to open up I think that didn't recover properly uh, yep so this is test.h um, some demos it's running tiny uh, login.sh does not work it hangs the editor so it did not recover properly uh, right apart from that nothing much ifconfig well it's a link to somewhere so yeah uh, again recovery is not like it, it, it doesn't form all the folders so here's the another thing uh, bz image that is a Linux image um, and I was I was happy to see it because that means we can boot something uh, so if I open again this in terminal and I uh, file the bz image you can see it shows up as a linux executable linux was in 2.2.17 it was again red flag linux.com so probably like a vendor that created it um, and just runs vga the good thing is i can actually boot this image using qemu and that is so much fun so uh, qemu uh, system uh, i386 and we'll set it as FDA because that's the only way I couldn't get it to boot um, and just roll with it so there you go it boots Linux um, not sure if you got the very early part of it but again yes I'm not providing it with, with the root FS because I don't have a root FS uh, so it just gets the um, error but it was able to boot into a lot of it anywho um close this up and then um, there are these boot partitions uh, or like boot sectors from the disk uh, there's a system map and some other stuff um, rest of it is some some are accessible some are not others are like you know bunch of config so all the root is like just scattered around so it just takes a lot of time to probably get all of that up but you know there is it's it's there uh, if with enough time you can go ahead and you know reconstruct all of this and actually have a booting system but yeah so I bought this module to actually uh, use it on the via c3 and other boards that I was planning on getting uh, that uh, that had IDE port and just for like you know uh, I'll flash it with something uh, interesting and I'll just have it as a test disk so you know maybe flash it with like FreeDOS and you just plug it in and it boots that sort of stuff but then really uh, I, I never got to it and then the excitement of actually finding something um, inside the disk that I could recover and actually finding a freaking 2.2 Linux kernel that's bootable uh, that was way more interesting to me um, so we can go ahead create a file partition if we like 
uh, you know, a, a fat partition for all our care. Uh, it goes ahead, creates that for us, and um, we can even mount it, write stuff to it, and it, like it, it works uh, as it would work. Um, let me delete that partition, and what we can do is run a simple benchmark. Uh, so I've already run it. Spoiler alert! But I would like to run it again, and we'll start a benchmark, and we'll see how that works. Oh, I just did one sample. Oh, it's it's doing more samples. It's just taking its own time. It's not fast. I, I it's it's not an SSD. Like that's one of the reasons I said it's not an SSD. So I'm going to fast forward it so you guys can see. You know what? It's it's actually taking even too much time for me. So I bought that. I bought it. Close board benchmark. No, nothing. It, it's like yeah. It, I think they didn't bought it. Right. Let's benchmark it with less um samples. So we'll just do ten. Um, access time we'll do a hundred. So we'll uh start benchmark and we will see how much time it takes. All right, so that's done, and yeah, so speed's not great. Um, so it's thirty three point nine megabytes per second and one point eight megabytes per second read and write. The average access time is actually pretty decent. Again, it's a flash chip, so random stuff is faster than any sort of mechanical drive. But again, to be honest, it's it's not an SSD. It's that's why people call it a DOM and not an SSD. It's not fast so again um, it's really made for sort of a read-only um, storage so you know have your RAM disk in there load everything from there and go go your merry way because um, there's no way you're going to get any sort of decent performance on a read write file system on this one so uh, again thank you so much for watching this is sort of it for the moment um, and hopefully you will see this DOM come up again when I'm doing some retro PC stuff. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.